It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Sunday, January 22nd, 2012. I am James Burns, bringing you the South Carolina primary results. First, let's begin with the big upset in uh, the Democratic primary. Vermin Supreme wins! Yeah! 68% to Obama, 30%, 2% to other. Not really. <laughs> hey, I can dream, can I? Actually, Obama won because he ran uncontested in South Carolina, so he got all the delegates for himself. But if Vermin Supreme would have been on the ballot in South Carolina, Obama would have probably still won. You know what I think? Maybe, just maybe, one day America is going to be ready for free ponies, mandatory toothbrush laws, zombie-powered clean energy, and, of course, time travel. And if you can correctly guess what that sound is from, you win a free FreedomFiles.us bumper sticker. All right, all right, time to get serious. Moving on to the uh, South Carolina GOP primary results. I had a little fun there because the GOP primary results is a bit more depressing, in my opinion. Coming in first place, Newt Gingrich with 40%, and he got around uh, 240,000 votes. Coming in in second place, Mitt Romney with 28% of the vote. He had over uh, 165,000 votes total. Uh, Third place, Rick Santorum with 17% of the vote. He had over 100,000 votes. Ron Paul in fourth place with 13% of the vote, and he got over 77,000 votes. And in fifth place, it was Other at 2% with over 10,000 votes. And in 2008, McCain won the uh, South Carolina primary with 33 percent and over 143,000 votes. Mitt Romney back in 2008 came in fourth place at nearly 65,000 votes and Ron Paul came in fifth place with over 15,000 votes. So this time around for what it's worth Ron Paul and Mitt Romney did a little bit better in 2012 than they did in 2008. Now, there's already been a bit of controversy, this one coming from Fox News. South Carolina Attorney General informs the Justice Department of dead voters. (laughs) South Carolina's Attorney General has notified the United States Justice Department of potential voter fraud. Attorney General Alan Wilson sent details of analysis by the Department of Motor Vehicles to the U.S. Attorney Bob Nettles. In a later dated Thursday, Wilson said in the analysis he found 953 ballots cast by voters listed as dead. In 71% of those cases, the ballots were cast between two months and 76 months after the people died. That means they quote-unquote voted up to six and a third years after their death. The letter doesn't say in which elections the ballots were cast. The analysis came out of research for the state's new voter identification law. The U.S. Justice Department denied the clearance of that law. Wilson told Nettles he asked that the state law enforcement division to investigate. And in other news, nearly 500,000 zombies in South Carolina voted for Newt Gingrich, Mitt Romney, and Rick Santorum. Oh! I had to throw that one in. But in all seriousness, there are a couple things that you have to consider when looking at the primaries as a whole because there's only been a couple states so far, Iowa, New Hampshire, and now South Carolina. Despite Newt Gingrich winning South Carolina and despite Rick Santorum winning the Iowa caucus, both Newt and Santorum have failed to qualify for several ballots, including Virginia, and the numbers just don't add up for them. They come about 500 delegates short of being able to win the GOP nomination. Because in order to get the GOP nomination, you have to have a minimum of 1,144 delegates. And they both come up short. On the other hand, Mitt Romney and Ron Paul are the only remaining GOP candidates on all the remaining ballots. And with Newt winning South Carolina, It only hurts and slows down Mitt Romney, who is most likely going to end up winning Florida in a few days because he's pumped a whole bunch of money into Florida. So it's only a matter of time before Newt Gingrich and Rick Santorum drop out of the race 
Meanwhile, you're going to have Ron Paul focusing on the Nevada caucus as well as Minnesota. So that's where he's going to be spending a lot of his efforts, energy, and money next. So he could do very well in Nevada and Minnesota. So Ron Paul is far from out of the primaries because there's still plenty of states left out there, especially if you go by Obama's count. <laughs> The next primary, of course, is the Florida primary, going to happen on January 31st. Then, after that, is the Nevada caucus on February 4th. And join us on Monday, January 23rd, for another edition of the Freedom Files podcast. We'll be giving you a preview of the MSNBC debate. That's going to be happening Monday night, January 23rd. And after the debate, join me on Ron Paul Radio for the return of the Freedom Files radio show, Day Viewing. January 23rd. We're going to be on 10 to midnight Eastern, 9 to 11 Central. So whichever time works for you, <laughs> Eastern or Central or Pacific or wherever you are in the world, I'm sure you'll figure it out. So be sure and join us after the debate on the Freedom Files radio show, Monday night, January 23rd, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central on ronpaulradio.com. And of course, Monday is the official launch day of the Ron Paul Radio Network, and I hope you all will check it out. There's going to be a lot of great pro Ron Paul hosts on the network. It's ronpaulradio.com. I hope you check it out, and I hope that you will um, listen on a very regular basis. And you can always find us online at freedomfiles.us. From there, we're linked up to several social sites, including Facebook. We have a YouTube channel, Freedom Files US. Please subscribe to us. You can also follow me on Twitter, and we have a poll question for you up at freedomfiles.us. How is 2012 going to go down? Log on and cast your vote, and join us on Monday for another edition of the Freedom Files podcast. <laughs>